Thanks for watching this Velocio Viewpoint. Today, we want to talk to you about our cloud assessment offering. And with me, I have Amy McKay. Hi, I'm Amy McKay, and I'm the Director of Client Sales here at Velocio. Thanks for joining us, Amy. And as many of you know, I'm Keith Godey, and I lead the cloud practice for Velocio. Uh, you know, we know that developing a cloud strategy is can be complex. It's a journey over time. We often get asked, where should I begin? How can I start creating the business case to move to the cloud? And we're excited to talk about our cloud assessment offering. And in partnership with Microsoft and Block 64, we now have this no, lo, no cost, not low cost, no cost assessment in a way to help inform you and help you build that, build that business case for your journey to the cloud. You know, Amy, most of our clients, I, I think, realize the importance of moving to the cloud. We're seeing a lot of activity in the past several months of our clients moving to the cloud. You know, would you agree? Is that kind of what you're seeing as you're talking with clients on a daily basis? Yeah, as we're talking with the clients, you know, a lot of customers are looking at moving to Business Central, which is now in the cloud. They're coming from, you know, perpetual or server-based licensing. We're seeing a lot of customers that have kind of maybe deployed in Azure, but maybe want to deploy more in Azure. They want to start talking about their cloud footprint. So we've, we've had a lot of interest in these cloud assessments um, that we're partnering with you guys on now. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And, and, you know, let's talk a little bit about what the assessment is, what's included and, and what a client can expect. So, you know, the, there's, there's, there's a cloud enablement report that comes out of it. And really that's a full review of your systems, your servers, what the costs and configurations of moving those into Azure might be. It also looks at end of life products and any of the risks that might need re remediated. So for example, we know Windows Server 2008 R2, we know SQL Server 2008, those are end of life operating systems and applications right now. You're not going to get security updates for them. You haven't been getting security updates for them. That's an important risk to know in your environment. The assessments will point that out. It looks at all the various tools that might be running in your environment and estimates the cost of all those tools. You know, we're seeing clients that had to rush rush to a remote work workforce, work from home. They were installing every type of collaboration tool you can imagine, right? And just to get their job done. And so they may have four or five different uh, video conferencing tools. They may have several file sharing tools and things like that. And this will point out the number of those installs in the environment and estimates on what the licensing cost that you're paying for those might be. Well, Keith, we've had several customers, actually, they deployed all of this stuff, you know, back in 2020. And so we've been able to kind of look at everything going, okay, you can get rid of this, get rid of this. Maybe yep. you've got Office 365 and we've kind of worked with your team on kind of scaling, you know, maybe back the licenses or moving them to a different model. And you guys have been great help, you know, on moving those licenses around and maybe save some costs. Yeah, yeah, no, and that's a great call out. So that's that's a really good example. So we we see cases where they might already even have and be paying for O365. Maybe they haven't licensed all their users or they haven't trained all their users on all the capabilities. So out of out of necessity, the user started using all these tools, not even knowing they had this stuff. So this will point that out for you. And there's also a um, what's called an O365 license optimization report the client would get with these assessments that'll show the licenses that they have available, who's using it, who's not using it. You know, it'll point out users that may have left the organization um, that they're still paying licenses for. So we can come in and use that data and really help optimize and even cut costs on, on things like O365 licensing. You know, and the last two things that are, that are included are, there's a security and threat advisor report how patched are your workstations? So we hope, we think that every month when Microsoft releases the patches, all the workstations are getting patched. But you know, this is a great way to validate that and see if there's things that you can do to help uh, you know, drive that increased security posture for your organization. And then finally, like you mentioned, Amy, there's a GP to BC specific report that can come out of these assessments. So if you're interested in migrating Great Plains to Business Central, the report will show you, hey, here are some things that will port very easily from your GP installation to BC. Here are some things that might require a little bit further discussion and really help you lay out a plan for moving potentially your Great Plains again to Business Central. Well, and that's that's a great point because the migrations that we're seeing, it really helps lay that foundation for those migrations. Now, Keith, one really big kind of, you know, I'd say pushback that we get when the team's really talking about cloud is security. Yeah. Okay. 
I've got a bunch of guy, you know, a bunch of, you know, agents or, you know, a program or some software kind of what's, what's in, what goes into, you know, getting the data, getting this, you know, who's responsible for the data, where does the data go? Who sees yeah. the data? That's been security, I think has been the biggest pushback that we're seeing. Yeah, I think it's certainly a, the majority of the questions that we get asked, right? And I think there is a process that, that we go through to, A, you know, if it's something you're interested in, get you nominated and, and talk with you a little bit more in depth about what's involved. But at a high level, this is an agentless installation. You don't need an agent installed on every server or workstation in your environment. There's one collector that gets installed in the environment and it starts to capture the data. That it usually is installed for about seven days and runs, and that's typically enough time to generate enough data for the reports reports that you get. The agent's removed, the data's purged completely after 90 days. Nobody else has access to the data other than people that the client uh, authorizes to use or see the data, and the data is to only be used for the purpose of these assessments. So, you know, they should feel very confident in A, the security of the data, and B, the purpose that the data is being used. And, okay. and, and again, we're, we're happy to sit, any concerns that they have, happy to sit and talk in depth with, with security concerns or anything else around that. But we, we want you to feel very good and very confident with how the data is being used and the security behind it. Great. Um, yeah, that's been the biggest concern. And then the benefit that we're seeing is just really, you know, the roadmaps that are coming out of these, not necessarily the GP to BC migrations, but, you know, um, just their their digital transformation, their you know roadmap, the cloud in the future. So that's that's the big benefit. Of the thing. Yeah. What other benefits would a customer expect to get out of? This? Yeah, I, yeah. I, there's each one of the reports that I mentioned. There's certainly value in in the, those individual reports, but it, it really what what they can expect to get, and I think what they should expect to get is is informed and enabling that that cloud or digital transformation strategy as a great as this being a great starting point to do that um, you know i said earlier it is a journey it does happen over a period of time having data points like this to help you both lay out what should be on that roadmap and when you should start executing the things so for example if if you know a lot of risks are identified from a security standpoint end of life things like that, I think that would clearly inform your strategy that those things need to be moved up in priority, right? So I think that's that that's the value that these provide. You know, like I said, individually they're good, but combined with where you wanna take your cloud journey and, and, and using these as data points to do that, that to me, that's the big value. That's great. And that and that's, that's what we're seeing on our side as well. So that's, I mean, I guess my only last question is why wouldn't, a customer or a client or you know anyone really want to take why wouldn't they take advantage of this assessment offering yeah I, I think you know and and that's a good question and i mean this in all sincerity that there really isn't a reason it is truly a no-cost offering there's no commitment after it we will we will generate the reports we will get you the data we will sit with you and help identify and make recommendations help you build that cloud strategy but at the end of the day there, again, like I said, there's no commitment to it. The agents removed, the data's purged. Um, I, I really do think this is just a great way to help help you get started moving to the cloud or further that cloud journey. And it it, it also takes into scope. We have a lot of clients that have started a move to the cloud, right? And so this agent, it, it'll collect from both your cloud environment and your on-prem environment, and and help make collective recommendations with that. So where it would apply if you've already moved into the cloud. You know, let's say you've got, um, you know, servers that are really large running in the cloud and they're barely being used and things like that. It'll make a recommendation that, hey, based on the usage pattern we're seeing, you could cut this thing in half, you know, dramatically start to drive down your cloud bill, right? Meanwhile, looking at your on-prem stuff and making recommendations there as well. So, so it really does paint a really nice holistic picture, even if you're in kind of that hybrid cloud environment right now. That's good to know. That was that was that was one thing that I forgot to ask that I'm I'm glad you clarified is you know taking a look at infrastructure that's already sitting in the cloud. So that's all. Those are all the questions that I had today, Keith. Um, great chat. I really appreciate the time. Yeah, no, Amy, as always, thank you for participating in this viewpoint. I'm sure we'll work more together on these. And you know, for our clients, just please reach reach out to your 
um, sales associate, and we will absolutely get you nominated. We'd be excited to get these going with you and start to partner with you on these assessments. And as always, thanks again, Amy, and thank you.